So we're talking about this one down here. Click on that and here are the options. A phase, phase diagram data table that's got a number of phase diagrams in it. Uh, if you open any one of these, here's one. This is the copper zinc diagram you just saw, and that is in fact the picture you just saw. If you open any one of the others, you get an equivalent phase diagram, and these can be copied and pasted into a report or Word document. If I go to the phases, I get the option of the phase, copper nickel, lead tin, or iron carbon. I'll go to lead tin, that's the one we looked at. And if I now click on a field like that, I get a picture on the left hand side of what the uh, uh, schematic of the structure. Click on that one, you get this one. Click on this one, you get the two phase structure, and so on. So a, you can, a student can wander around on this and confirm what the structure appro that is appropriate to that point in the, in the space looks like. You can do the same for the iron carbon diagram. Now if I st switch instead to cooling paths, that's the other one I showed you, and again I'll go to lead tin. Uh, here are the various options here. So we'll take the one that I had. I started with over here. If I click on there, it's all liquid. It's identified down the bottom there, all liquid. As I cool, as I move the mouse down the cooling path, you can see the eutectic growing at the constant eutectic temperature until it's all eutectic, and then finally, when it gets you know, down in the, in the uh, below the eutectic temperature, it's all eutectic. If instead I chase chase choose this path. Up here in the liquid phase, it's fa phase field, it's all liquid. As you cross the phase field, the two phase field, the amount of solid increases until when you get the bottom here, there is primary lead with some tin in it, with eutectic surrounding it. And if you did the same thing over this side, you can go from liquid above the, here to the growth of the tin rich phase which then goes to a single phase in the single phase field, but uh, shows some secondary precipitation once you get out of the single phase field and into this two phase field at the bottom here. So it's a way of illustrating, in a very simple way, the way in which cooling uh, microstructures are generated during cooling. Now finally, the lever rule. Here's the lever rule. There's a little bit of explanation about it. I won't go into that. Here's what the thing looks like. It's a very simple AB diagram. And if I track down this particular contour here, as soon as I get into the two phase field, I get a tie line with a with liquid at one end and solid at the other and the blue box, the box to the blue top now reads the composition of the liquid and the volume fraction or the weight fraction and the yellow, the box with the yellow top does the same for the solid. As I go down these numbers change, the amount of solid increases, the amount of liquid de decreases until when we get to the bottom here it's all 100% now solid. So um, that is a uh, a way for students to explore the phase diagram. Um, the bit of text that you saw a moment, moment ago that I didn't explain uh, explains what goes on in these boxes. What's the calculation for the weight fraction that you're seeing there? Right, that's what the phase diagram tool looks like.